Uh, now, moving on to another one, uh, the, the $175 million um, cash bond that Trump had to post and doesn't have the money for, and he got another criminal to do it for him. This guy named Don Hankey, Don Hankey on the West Coast, who is a real scum fucker. I mean, he but this is to be expected. Scum like Trump hangs out with scum like Hankey. I mean, that's how it works. Criminals hang with criminals. And Hankey's financial company has a history of unlawful lending practices. That means criminal lending practices. This is reported by the New Republic. Uh, Anyway, the company that is underwriting Trump's massive $175 million bond, uh, that company is owned by a man whose shitty business practices were flagged by Trump's own administration. (laughs) Yeah, you you, you see how this shit works? I I, I mean, this is Hanky's way of saying, okay, boss, uh, your Justice Department went after me when you were president, but I'm going to bail your worthless ass out now so that if you do become president, uh, you'll take care of any future problems that I might have. Capiche? That's what this amounts to. Now, Don Hanky... Is a billionaire. He's also known on the West Coast and other places as the, quote, king of subprime car loans, end quote, subprime car loans. That's when somebody who does not have good income, somebody who is divorced, somebody, usually a woman, somebody who has had a bankruptcy, someone who doesn't have a lot of money. They would go to this son of a bitch and he would give them a subprime car loan, which meant interest payments of 25, 30 percent, perhaps maybe even higher, knowing full well that he would sell the same car probably four, five, six times because the person to whom he gave the loan and hence the car could no more afford the payments that would then become due and would default. And this prick would take the car back and sell it again. Now, I speak from personal experience about this issue. Uh, When I was 20 years old and living in Tampa, the hellhole of the earth, I had a situation similar to this where I desperately needed a car, borrowed some money from my mother who was back in Ohio, uh, went to one of these so-called shade tree lots is what they call them in Florida. You know, some shitty little car lot that sits under, well, a big shade tree. And the guy who ran it was just slicker than 30 weight oil. I mean, the guy just was sickening now when I think back on it. But yeah, he put me in a car. He put me in a, I think it was a 1953, 1953 or 54 Plymouth or something. And my payments would be like $20 a week. And of course, the interest rate was in the fine print. And I took the car and I drove out and I kept the car for about two weeks. Okay, about two months. And at one point, I missed a $20 payment. And on this particular night, I had gone into a a, a fish restaurant in Tampa to buy some fish to take out, fried fish. When I came out of the restaurant, my car was gone. (laughs) Gone, went in the parking lot where I left it. So I first called the police, and I told them where they asked me, where did you buy the car? And I told them, they said, well, you better check with the dealer. He may have repossessed it. What? So I called the dealer. Yep, sure enough. Well, Mr. Mike, you missed a payment. I missed a week payment of 20 bucks. I've got it in my pocket. Oh, God, we're sorry. If you want to come back in, and we'll start over again, you know, for $200 down, we'll put you in the same car if you, you see what I'm talking about. Now, that instant incident, all those years ago, really started the sense I had about Tampa and about Florida in general. And I had many more experiences like that. But I digress. Just wanted to pass that on with you. So this this bastard, Don Hankey, the king of subprime car loans, well, he was sued by the Justice Department just nine months into the Orange Bastards presidency. Yeah, because it was discovered... That another one of Hankey's companies, and he's one of these slimy bastards that has 9, 10, 12 different companies, like Trump. 
where, you know, shit can be hidden and, and buried in a blizzard of, of paperwork and, and nobody knows who's what, where, how, when. Somebody wants to sue Hanky. Uh, it, it's going to take years just to get, get through pretrial hearings. That's how these scum like Trump set things up. So one of Hanky's companies called Westlake Services had illegally repossessed 70 cars belonging to members of the U.S. military, which violated something called the Service Members Civil Relief Act. Now, the Daily Beast reported that yesterday. The article I'm quoting from is in the New Republic. So this company owned by this prick, this hanky, settled with the Trump administration in just 10 days. That's according to a settlement agreement. And quick, 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 cover this up, cover this up, do anything, settle, settle, before it goes to court. So the slime bastard agreed to pay $700,000 in damages to affected members of the U.S. military, and it was fined $60,000 by the federal government. Now, let's be real here just for a second, okay? $700,000 to a billionaire? It's, It's a... Rounding error. $60,000? That's fucking lunch. So the Trump administration made sure that this slimy son of a bitch Don Hankey got off easy. Okay. Prosecutors in the case wrote this, quote, Westlake and Wilshire, those are their two companies, specifically target service members, including junior enlisted service members, as customers for their subprime loan products, end quote. Notice the wording, target. They go after them. But it wasn't the first time that this prick had been penalized by the feds. Two years before this particular ripoff, Westlake and one of its subsidiaries, Wilshire, another, here we are again. Now, these are owned by Don Hankey. They were hit by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau for, quote, illegal debt collection tactics, end quote. That's according to the Daily Beast. That resulted in an even larger penalty, including more than $44 million in restitution payouts. But again, if you're a billionaire, $44 million is something you may notice when your accountant says, what's this expense? But it doesn't mean shit. Now, illegal debt collection tactics, kind of like if you are 20 years old and you're a junior member of the U.S. military and you go into a fish takeout restaurant to get an order of fried fish and you come out and you find your fucking car has been popped or, as they say in the business, log chained (laughs) back back to the car dealer. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. But to Hanky, to this prick who bailed out Trump, that's all part of his game. He, according to what I have here, he carved out his $7.5 billion fortune through those kinds of shitty predatory practices. Isn't capitalism wonderful? Isn't the law wonderful to protect sharks like this prick? He targeted low-income customers with high-interest auto loans. Yeah? And the way our financial system works... If you are low income, well, you might as well just get used to living in a fucking cardboard box because you're never going to afford a two or three bedroom apartment. Oh, you may be able to afford it, but I mean, my God, your credit score is what, 212? Get out of here. Now, Hanky also had something called Knight Specialty Insurance Company, K-N-I-G-H-T, Knight, as laughably in... Knight in shining armor, okay? Uh, He had this insurance company, and that's the group that underwrote Trump's bond for his civil fraud trial. But this is not Hanky's only investment in Trump's financial situation. According to the New Republic, Hanky is also believed to be the largest shareholder in Axos, A-X-O-S, financial. That's according to... uh, Lisa Rubin, who is one of the legal consultants on MSNBC, that's a financial institution 
that in 2022 refinanced more than $50 million of Trump loans on Trump Tower and Trump National Durrell, Miami, that's the golf club, according to documents filed with the Office of Government Ethics. So Trump and this slimy fucker Don Hankey have been slime buddies for a long time. Hankey told Forbes magazine that the insurance company initiated the deal with the criminally charged uh, orange bastard and explained the insurance company, a spokesman for Hankey's insurance company, explained that Trump had used both cash and investment grade bonds to secure the money with with his insurance company. That's how or why the $175 million uh, bond, while Trump appeals this bullshit, was posted. Hankey added that he had never met Trump, (laughs) but that he had been a supporter of his previous campaigns. I never met him. Ah. Anyway, Hankey told Forbes magazine on Monday of this week, he said, quote, that's what we do at night insurance. I'd never met Donald Trump. I'd never talked to him on the phone. I heard that he needed a loan of a bond, and this is what we do. So we reached out, and he responded. End quote. So according to Forbes, New Republic, Daily Beast, (laughs) and now you heard it on the Malloy podcast, Mr. Hankey is fucking scum, low-rent scum, filth, just like Trump who has no problem, Mr. Hankey or the Orange Bastard, in screwing over people who are desperate, just like the people that Trump screws over. They're desperate for something or somebody to elevate their life out of the shit that they've created for themselves or the shit that this society has created for them. So they turn to an autocrat. They turn to a dictator like Trump who spews out lies and bullshit and fakery. Thinking that, oh, he'll uplift us. Well, to those people, I would just say, hey, listen, you had four years of this son of a bitch. What did he do for you? Absolutely nothing. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial But we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.